Hello folks, this is Alex from the Timelapse Guy and today's video is going to be an editing tutorial of a timelapse sequence I took in Sri Lanka with my Sony Alpha 6000, the camera I'm actually filming with at the moment and I was using the Samyang lens I showed you in my last video if you haven't seen it, just check it out over here I'll link you it on this little info dot and yeah, I'm going to show you every step I'm editing with Lightroom 5 and Ella Timelapse 4 and I hope this is going to help you with your own timelapse projects uh, so enough talk, let's just jump right into the editing process. In this picture you can see how I set up the camera. The place where I took this time lapse is called Ella. It's right in the center of the bottom of Sri Lanka. And as I already said, I was using the Sony Alpha 6000 with a 12mm Samyang lens. For the foreground, you can see in the center of the picture I was choosing this uh, little tree. And in the background you can see the big mountains where the clouds nicely jammed on top of the mountain and slowly moved over it. So if you just take some photos and add them to a time-lapse movie, this would look really nice where the clouds move fast over the mountain top. So I decided to take this spot there. In this drone shot you can see the clouds nicely move over the mountain top. The shot is sped up by 400%. If you want to see more drone footage I took in Sri Lanka, check out the info button on the top right corner. So now I will show you the editing process from this raw time-lapse sequence into this edited color graded sequence. Now we jump right into LR time-lapse. I'm using LR time-lapse 4. I think there's a newer version of LR time-lapse 5. Uh, check out the link in the description to download a demo version or the full version uh, of this uh, Lightroom plugin. So first thing we're doing is to open up the sequence and yeah, sorry f for this being German, but I don't want to reinstall it, so you have to deal with it, I think. Okay, now, now we're loading the sequence, and this may take a while. You can see the progress on this top bar. So now as uh, every picture is loaded in here, we get a little preview on this uh, top left corner here. You can press the play button and then you can see the time sequence. Uh, unedited here and yeah, what we are going to do now is to check the exposure bar or this exposure line here uh, and if this is this is not doing any weird stuff like some jumps or stuff so if this was for example a sun set this line would go down as the exposure of the sunlight drops as well so uh, but this is more or less straight so we only need to use a keyframe for the first picture and in the very end uh, and I'm also using the simple workflow here. Uh, okay, so we're doing keyframes, one in the beginning, one in the end. You can use this uh, slider here to uh, just add a, add a second one and it's automatically putting it to, uh, to the end if you put more. So now we save those keyframes and the sequence. And what you're doing next is uh, you need to open up Lightroom in the background. I did it here already. And now you drag this sign. You can just simply take it and drag it into the import dialog of Lightroom. And maybe it's giving us a preview. These files are pretty big. They are like, you can see it here, they are 24 megabytes of size and it, uh, these are raw files, but I assume these, this is the sequence, so I just import it. And yeah, this takes a little while as well. And yeah, for example, you can see this example picture here and uh, yeah I think the main thing we have to do here is to add more contrast and more uh, contrast to the clouds because they are like a, a big white mass there and I want to see the the whole depth of clouds uh, so we need to do some something there and uh, the greens look really washed out so we need to make the colors a little bit more pop the same with the blue so uh, actually there's not that much to do and this will be a really easy editing so we head back to the whole sequence and as you can see here this first picture is marked with uh, stars so this means this is treated individually because this is a keyframe um, and here in the bottom right corner you can choose uh, the keyframe filter. So we are searching for LRT4 keyframes and now it should be the keyframe we created uh, in for the first picture and for the last picture. This is the two pictures. And yeah, well now we choose the first picture and uh, hit on develop. 
and now we can do something with this uh, picture. So first things first, uh, we basically just go straight through all these sliders and after that we just go and put in uh, some of these uh, graduated filters and of these radial filters just to make the clouds more visible and to make uh, the colors more pop. So let's start with uh, the sliders. There is no real rule how you do this because you actually just move them around and check out what looks good to you uh, or what you don't like. I'll put a little bit more yellow in there because it was a warm day and I'm not going to change anything here because I'm going to change the green color uh, later on. So exposure. We're going to lower the exposure a little bit I think and put a higher contrast in there. Uh, we need more exposure by the way. The highlights. If you if you lower the highlights you can you can drastically see more clouds there because uh, if you compare especially this area here with a uh, lower set of highlights you will see way more there. But you can't do too low or too high with them because then the at some point the picture starts to look weird. There's like weird uh, lines in the picture especially if you're filming a sun so be careful with the lights and the whites as well uh, but if you don't go too heavy with those uh, you'll be totally fine yeah for the shadows actually if i if i go up a little bit i, I have more in the foreground so this this edge here gets more visible um yeah but i i can't do that much uh, but i think this is fine we can drop the whites a little so we can have more clouds and for the blacks it's basically a little bit the same for like the shadows uh, if you if you hire them a little bit, you'll see more of your darker areas of your picture. So next thing is the clarity. Clarity is a super cool tool to make stuff more visible. If I go on an extremely high amount here, uh, you'll see this looks it it actually looks quite nice. But if you if this does not look natural anymore, so you can't you can't do this. Oh, you can do this if you like this. Nobody nobody tells you what you can do or what you can't do in photo editing. But I think, for my opinion, I, I'm I'm fine with this amount. And if you go dehaze, you'll see if you see this is this um, totally changes the whole picture. Uh, but you'll see the clouds. But I actually just put a very little amount here and put those later on in with the radial filters. Now with, with vibrance and saturation, you just change the color popping here. So if you see, you see the, the cloud is getting really bright here and the green as well, but this does not look natural anymore. So uh, I think I'm going with plus 16 and for saturation the same. If you just go like, yeah, we can go like this, but then this looks like, I don't know, like any ecstasy land or something. So take care with those sliders. And I think I'm going for this. Yeah, now we're having these tone curves. And what we can do here is to move these sliders so you can actually grab the curve and put it and, and pull it where you want it to be. Um, I'm fine with only working with the with those four sliders. And yeah, I think highlights a little bit lower. The, the we can't do go too low with the light because then our whole shot looks very dark. So I think I'm going to uh, yeah just like add a little bit of it and yeah for the darks maybe we can we can come a little bit brighter than now uh, and shadows it's it's they're doing basically the same stuff as the sliders in the top we already had like uh, like these ones here uh, but now we can like go for the top curve and uh, take highlights or brighten the highlights lower the highlights but actually I'm really fine with how it looks now this Control field here is uh, really interesting. You can change the hue. So, for example, you press hue, and then you using this uh, this button here, you take it, and then you can just totally change the look of everything. So now we got like, yeah, we're we're again in ecstasy land, but uh, we don't want this to be yeah this wrong from the natural color color. So actually, I'm only using this for like if there's. If, the, if there's dry uh, dry spots in the grass or something, we can just easily uh, color it green or I can go like a darker green here, which looks maybe a little bit more, uh, uh, yeah, more natural or more cool to you. But uh, yeah, we, as same with all the other sliders, you can, you can go like crazy with this, then it looks like super unnatural. 
but uh, I'm I'm really fine with how it already looks so I'm going to uh, go back for these ones and the same with the saturation you can you can grab the saturation uh, bar here then grab the slider and then you can like totally set oversaturate your sky actually I want to put a little bit more saturation in there but not as much as I just did there so for example I, I'm going for this this looks natural to me uh, and yeah this sky was really blue at this day and it's a natural color for this guy and you can also go for these green tones a little bit maybe just take a higher amount now you need to care that the colors here don't pop too much so maybe I uh, even go a little bit lower with the with these saturations yeah if we're done with that you can do some some stuff more here we don't need to do this now and if I if I hit on done uh, I can check the before and after shot so you should do this uh, from time to time and you can see we got so much more color in the cloud we got like nice green grass and yeah the clouds are a little bit more uh, contrast and uh, contrasted and visible but not as much as I want them to be so I uh, head back into the into the editing region here and choose the radial filter you can like take them and move them around and put them where you want them to be so actually I want this whole region to be affected by this filter but not as much the sky but more the more of the clouds and now what we're doing is to dehaze and to higher the clarity so if I go for a full clarity here you can see the clouds get way more visible so I think we're going like this and maybe dehaze as well a little that's too much maybe maybe like this and I think the sky this blue looks super unnatural now so this is affected by the the haze so I need to lower it lower it and um, maybe take a little bit out of the saturation of this uh, this whole filter like this so that's so this this is not popping anymore uh, you can also lower the exposure a little bit so the clouds look a bit a little bit more dangerous a little bit more like a storm um, yeah but uh, this is this depends on your um, favorites I think if I lower the exposure a little this is this is looking totally cool yeah, and I could also put another one on top of this this filter and do the exact same thing or um, maybe go for a special region like uh, I haven't done that much to these parts of the clouds here um, yeah so I'm going to do the same with these clouds there as well so now we got like really uh, really hard rain clouds here and um, but that's okay I think this looks so much better than than it looked in the beginning so we check the before and after picture again uh, okay like this um, maybe we zoom a little bit out and here you can see we changed uh, it so much it does not look unnatural to me uh, but we got so much more conscious in the clouds so we can uh, tell that there's different clouds and not only a white big mass of clouds so I'm really pleased with how the shot looks now and that's why I'm not going to change anything more on this picture um, but I copy everything I, I did so you can hit copy button and then just copy all your changes you did to this picture and then you paste everything to the other keyframe. Uh, this also looks good to me. If this does not look good to you, you can change everything in this or you can change stuff in this screen, uh, in this keyframe like we did in for the other uh, keyframe. But I'm really pleased with this and so now I'm uh, heading back to both keyframes and what you're doing now, you press uh, Command A or uh, Control A depending on which software you're using and then you uh, hit Control S or Command S to save the metadata from uh, of those two pictures. And now we're heading back into Lightroom and reload the sequence. Now you can see the keyframes changed because we changed the exposure there and we changed a little bit of the looks. And now we tell LR Tarnaps 
to do an auto, transi auto transition here. So now every picture in between those two keyframes uh, is edited by, or no, actually, no, it's, it's getting edited by Lightroom later, but the metadata of these pictures are getting changed by Ella Tarnaps. You can put in some deflicker and now you save everything. And if you turn back into Lightroom now and uh, remove the filter, and you have the whole sequence. Now you hit Command A, so you chose every picture here, and now you press on metadata in, uh, yeah, in the top bar, and uh, choose read metadata from files. And now uh, Lightroom reads out the metadata which were changed in our time lapse and puts the changes which are written in the metadata to the pictures. And now you can see every picture uh, one after another gets changed. So now we're here, and these ones will get changed as well. Yeah. If this is done, you need to export the whole sequence back to LR Timelapse, where you can export it into a Timelapse movie. This usually takes quite a while because um, Lightroom has to apply all the changes to the pictures and stuff and does a lot of fancy stuff, I guess, and that's why it's taking so long. So I'm choosing the folder where I saved the time lapse and export it right there. And now you can choose you want to export it to LR time lapse. And I just hit export. And I guess this is going to take like half an hour, 20 minutes, something. So this now takes quite a while. You see, there's no progress. So um, yeah, I'll just skip this part of the video and we'll be back if everything is exported and we're back in LR Town Labs. So now Lightroom finished the export and and then you jump automatically into LR Town Labs and here you can do some little changes like the resolution you want to have, uh, the frame rate you need or, the, or if you want to if you want your video to have speed sped up but uh, I want it uh, at a default speed rate because I can uh, change the speed later. You can change the quality. I go with high. You can go higher, but actually I think this is not giving you that much of a benefit, but uh, it will become a bigger file then. Okay, I think I don't need the um, movement. I don't know how it's called. Movement blur? Movement blur probably because um, yeah, I don't want this and I neither want to get this sharpened afterwards because I sharpened it a lot. So now you can click the render button and this does not take that much time. So I think this is like one or two minutes, probably depending on the power of your hardware. So now it's finished and we can see the results. it for today's video i hope you liked it comments and questions just down below the description box check out the description box for the links for to the software i was using like the video subscribe my channel and i hope i see you in the next one